Welcome to Man360, I'm your host Brian. On today's program we talk about an issue that every man has or will deal with, the lure and pull of pornography. We caught up with two men at a Promise Keepers event recently that were associated with ministries to help men dealing with porn addiction and to stay away from those kinds of temptations. My first conversation was with the Vice President of Business Development for Covenant Eyes, Sam Black. Covenant Eyes is a nationally known company founded almost 20 years ago that helps men with online integrity and accountability. Sam discusses some of the ways that Covenant Eyes can be used and shares a bit about what they do. Then I talk with Brian Stewart. Brian has quite a testimony about falling into the trap of pornography that led to affairs on his wife, including an inappropriate relationship with his daughter's friend. Brian is a walking testimony that God can redeem anyone and that no one is beyond help. He is the founder of a men's ministry called Bold, Brothers Overcoming Lustful Desires. It's an eye-opening testimony and something that every man needs to hear. In our hobby segment today, we'll do something I enjoy. I'll show you some of the visual and performance modifications that I made on my 2010 Dodge Ram 1500. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. Sam Black has been with Covenant Eyes for over 15 years and has spoken and connected with thousands of men about sexual addiction. Sam shared a little about his own struggle with pornography and some of the common traits that men have fallen into and how Covenant Eyes is working hard to combat those lustful thoughts. Sam is an author and looks for ways to connect like-minded organizations to strengthen the worldwide fight against pornography. Sam also shares important information about a 21-day detox program. This program helps men get on their right path with their mind and also with layers of accountability. Here's my interview with Vice President of Business Development for Covenant Eyes, Sam Black. So Sam, thank you for being on Man360. Honor to be here, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Covenant Eyes. Uh, I know you've worked there for 15 years, so I think you may know at least one or two things about or the ministry, or a couple of things. <laughs> um, but could you just share a little bit about what Covenant Eyes do and then what your part of that is? Yeah, CovenantEyes.com, we've been around for 21 years and we provide uh, both education to help people understand how they get stuck in pornography mm -hmm. and how to begin to escape yeah. that compulsive behavior. But then we also provide software for your phones, tablets, and computers. People are most familiar familiar with filtering, we do that too, mm -hmm. but the real power is in our accountability software. Mm -hmm. And what, how that works is wherever I go, uh, Covenant Eyes is on my devices, and I can choose you as my accountability partner or my ally as we call it, Yeah. and uh, you receive a report that shows how I'm using my devices, and not just the internet, but across the board. We're actually capturing the screen, and with artificial intelligence, that's awesome. It knows what pornography is. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can say, hey, Sam, uh, even if I'm not looking at pornography, maybe I'm skimming around the edges. Mm -hmm. And that's going to show on the report as well. That's great. And so you can have a conversation with me. Say, hey, Sam, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What are yeah. you thinking? Yeah. And because uh, guys don't like to, to talk about how they feel, <laughs> right? They, but we're, what we're feeling leads to what we begin thinking, and what we begin thinking about is what we begin doing. Mm, that's and good. And so we need to, to have those honest and open conversations. Yeah. So how does the accountability piece, you just mentioned that, as far as other people getting that report, you know, how is that accountability, maybe just you personally, how has that helped you with your journey? And again, I think you mentioned something really interesting there too. You said compulsive behavior. I think yeah. sometimes we just look at pornography just as something that's so dirty and so terrible, but really it's just a compulsive behavior for something that, and a need that we're trying to fill in our lives. Yeah. Um, and you know, really where Jesus wants us and God wants us to be free of those things. So talk to me a little bit about the, the accountability piece and what that's meant to you personally. Yeah, so um, I think there are, there are in maybe some people who have never been exposed to pornography at a young age, Yeah, they might have temptations with lust because we're all attracted to the to the naked form. That's God. Right. God, God brought that to us in, right. for marriage. Uh, we leave and cling to our spouse. Mm -hmm. 
But often, guys were exposed at an early age. I've talked to thousands of men who say, I've prayed to God, please take this away from me. I never want to do this again. Mm -hmm. But they go back. So what's going on? And here's what I found in talking with thousands of guys and, and many other counselors, et yeah. cetera, is exposed at an early age. I was exposed at 10. Mm -hmm. And then a secrecy and hidden repetition. Mm -hmm. Often there is some trauma or drama that happened in their life. Mm. I came from a violent home. And so I, I had a friend, though, and his dad had pornography fallen out of his closet. And I could take whatever I wanted, and I yeah. did. Yeah. And I trained my brain hmm. to crave pornography, and that became compulsive wow. behavior. Yeah. I didn't want that. And when um, I was very fortunate, uh, my wife was a, uh, attending a church. By this time after college, I was an agnostic. Mm -hmm. and, but I humored her and went to church with her and found people that were open mm. and honest because they had been through recovery themselves. Yeah. And they helped got, take me on a guide, guided tour of yeah. helping understand, hey, this you weren't designed this way. God didn't make you this way. Yeah, that's awesome. Evolution didn't make you this way. Right. And so it really, uh, being able to walk with someone mm -hmm. and openness and honesty yeah. and care, yep. a safe place and a safe process. Yeah, that's awesome. So talk to me a little bit about, I know you guys have a 21-day detox that's process right. that you guys use as well. Yeah. And I know it's anonymous. We were you know, talking at the table a little bit about what you guys do. Share a little bit with that with them and then. Yeah, we, we, have, we developed this program called Strive because, um, and you can text Strive to 66866. Again, text Strive to 66866. And it walks men through, specifically for men, mm -hmm. to help them understand the shame cycle, yeah. how they get stuck. You see, often when, you've, when a Christian man has looked at pornography, he feels intense shame. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, Jim Kress, calls it uh, self-hatred at my own expense. That's so great. And that self-hatred at my own expense makes me withdraw from God. I, maybe I'll put off praying for a while because maybe I'm just not worthy enough. Maybe if I have enough mm. days of good behavior, then maybe I'm acceptable mm -hmm. again. Or even, even if they're, they're praying right then, they don't know how to begin to escape that bondage. Yeah. And they, they, they pray, God, please take this away from me. I never want to be here again. I promise I'll never do it again. And then a few days later or a day later or that same day or the next week, yeah. they're back to watching pornography mm -hmm. again. So why is that? Why do they feel so stuck? Well, we walk them through that, through this program called Strive. That's awesome. And Strive is a 21-day detox from pornography. And there's video, lessons, uh, a community of other men that you can reach out to for prayer uh, and, and, awesome. and reflection. Yeah. And so now you're part of a community. For 21 days, it begins walking you through those first steps mm -hmm. toward openness, through recovery, through change, and we're, man, guys are blowing it up. We released a, a Protestant version this year. Mm -hmm. We have more than 40,000 guys who have already been through it. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, Sam, thank you for being on Man360. Honor being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it was great to hear, you know, just about what you're doing. And just, again, just to encourage men to be better than just the, the temptations and things around them and really believing that God can do those great things through them. You no, know, so often we have taught in the church that this is always going to be a struggle for a man. Hmm. But we can live in total and absolute freedom. Absolutely. You know, here we are in COVID. I, I did a number of Zoom meetings with, with men over COVID. And, I, and here it was, able to live in freedom with all the triggers that would have sent right. me back to porn. Right. Isolation and frustration and yep. boredom. And, yep. and so freedom is a real thing. Yeah. Please take advantage of that Strive program. Text Strive to 66866. That's awesome. Thank you again, Sam. Thank you. God Appreciate bless you. it. Bless bye you. Bye. Before we get to our interview with Brian, we have a quick hobby segment. As you may or may not know, I am truly the son of a mechanic, hey dad, and someone who cannot leave any vehicle I own alone. So I took my stock 2010 Ram 1500 and did a few cosmetic things to it, as well as a new exhaust system that I installed with my friend Victor. Here's what I did to my truck. Check it out.
So I grew up in a family where my dad didn't really believe that we could buy a vehicle and leave it stock, just leave it the way it was. We always had to take it, we had to put better rims on it, we had to put a louder stereo in it, had to make it faster, and had to really make it one of our own type of vehicles that we would drive as a Morris. So what I did was I took my Ram 1500 Laramie and I did some modifications to it. Now you can see some pictures of the truck before we did all the modifications on it. You can see the rims that, we, that were on it. You can see uh, just the natural badging. You can see the normal headlights in the front uh, grill, kind of the area. So what we did was we took this truck and now this is my Ram 1500 Laramie Morris Edition. So first what we did is I took all of the badges off of the truck, which basically a badge is anything that's, ba all these are glued, most all these are glued on the truck. Some vehicles have them where there's pins on the back basically to align the logo and kind of the back piece of, of the, on the, the tailgate. But what I did is I took all of these badges that were on here, you can see the other ones that were just chrome. I took all those off here and actually what I did is I got a paint stick from Home Depot and I taped it to the truck so I knew exactly the distance from basically this corner edge here to the middle of the door and I laid it on top of those of those lettering then I flipped that up took those off basically unglued them it, I used goof off was an, a glue remover that I used and then I basically put these on here I, I went with a red accent and then black on top so everything that you'll see around the truck is red and black basically you know you can do kind of any color scheme that you wanted I just like it with the silver and then this was actually a Hemi 5.7 liter badge from a newer Ram, but all these Rams have that same engine in them. And I just like to look at this with the black, the red, and the, and the chrome. So this is obviously the face or the front of my truck. What I did special here is I took the grill and I actually painted the inside of this kind of honeycomb look inside the grill. I painted that red with a really good, I think it's Krylon makes a paint that will actually stick to plastic. And uh, so what I did is all these grills are plastic, they're not metal. So I painted that, taped all this off, with the, the blue painter's tape and then sprayed all that. And then I put these black louvers over the top of each of the four sections just to kind of give it an offset look and just give it so it looks really black when you're far away. But when you walk up to it or you look at it from a certain angle, you can see the red inside with the black. And then also I took off the front badge, which was the, the main Ram badge. And I found this one that was red and black that fit in here nicely. It doesn't fit perfect on these corners, but I still thought it looked nice, nice again with that black and red kind of accent theme that we're going with with the truck. These are the headlights that I also got as well. So these were just basically bolt on. I took the other ones off, put, put these on. These are actually an LED type of bulb that are top and bottom. And then also what I did too, is I put all LED bulbs inside the truck and all the way actually around the truck. So I took rid, got rid of all of just the, kind of that yellow looking bulb and put bright white LED, uh, I think they're 65K at least, or 6, 6, 65,000 I think is the number. Also what I did is I wanted to do yellow fog lights um, I just think it looks nice as an accent with the truck. And actually, the, these fog lights were still in really good shape. The lenses were still, they weren't pitted or anything. So I found this uh, yellow material that actually applies to the top and over the top of the plastic. So these are the original um, fog lights that are on here. But then I also put an LED bulb in here and I put this yellow film over it. So now I have a yellow fog light without having to spend, you know, $150, $200 on this. I think this total setup with the, the bulb and the film over the top of it was like maybe $75 for both sides. So if anyone knows my family, we are very seldom do we have just the standard rims and tires on any truck or any vehicle really that we've owned. And actually my dad always told me that the first thing you wash or you, you clean after you do the windows is you wipe your rims down. So, cause you wanna get all the brake dust off them, you wanna make them look nice. I went with the XD uh, KMC rims. These are 20 inch rims and um, just a really nice accent piece as far as the rims on it. I really think a rim makes a vehicle and really makes it really sets it off. Again, I like black. These are kind of a flat black, so they're easy to keep clean. Um, they're easy to wipe down. And then I also went with the Cooper Discoverer. Um, these are 20 inch, obviously tires, uh, low type E. And um, these are 275, uh, what are they, 275 60 R20s. And um, again, they're great, kind of an all season kind of more of an off-road, but definitely good in the winter and also good just on the highway. They don't make a lot of sound, which is really great. So one other thing that I did to the truck is my friend Victor and I actually changed the exhaust out on the truck. So let me show you what it sounds like now. So my wife and I have two different modes for the truck and there's actually an actuator that's underneath the truck. It's by Flowmaster and they have a button here that I can press and I can change it from this. Call Yolanda mode. 
this. We call that Brian mode, and I call that fun mode, actually. So there's actually a little button that I have attached in here inside the truck, and I can just change it with the press of a button, you can change the exhaust sound, and also the fun level when you're driving around town. Brian Stewart is the founder of Bold, Brothers Overcoming Lustful Desires, and as an unbelievable testimony of God's love and grace when he was running away from God in his pursuit of a greater and greater sexual high. When you hear what Brian has been through and how God has redeemed things in his life, I know that it will strengthen you in your walk with Jesus and motivate you to reach out for help. One of the encouraging things to learn when I talked to Brian was that he actually uses covenant eyes as part of his accountability. It was a great example of Sam and Brian's ministries working together for the good of every man they can help. Here's my interview with the founder of Bold Men's Ministry, Brian Stewart. So Brian, thank you for being on Man360. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm quite a surprise to, <laughs> to get this interview. Yeah, so I just wanted to sh have you share a little bit about your testimony and kind of you know, how you felt like some things had happened in your, when you were a child that really developed into something much worse when you were an adult. Kind of just share your testimony. Yes, yeah, sir. Whenever I was, uh, when I was young, about eight years old, um, my, my father was a pastor. And every, being a pastor's kid, I was at church every, every Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Um, I was in church on Wednesdays. And it was within the church that I was sexually abused mm -hmm. um, from a member of the church. And, you know, that's where a root dug deep and grab, grabbed a hold of me as yeah. a child. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like I was searching my whole life to try to find something that would heal mm. this pain mm -hmm. as um as a, as a innocent child yeah you know my innocence was stolen within a church mm -hmm. you know and so as i was growing up you know my that pain turned into anger towards god wow yeah and instead of instead of running to god for comfort i went the total opposite direction and and um i got involved with with pornography mm -hmm. um I got involved with the drugs and the alcohol, and yeah. and, it, and then everything just escalated because I found out that it turns out pornography is pretty insatiable. You know, you you yeah. can't you can't ever get enough of it. Right. Yeah. So. so, do you feel like in that process now of where you feel like with bold with your ministry mm -hmm. that you feel like that God encouraged you to start? Talk to us a little bit about that ministry and talk to us a little bit about you coming out of mm. the things that happened in your past and now where you feel like God is taking you in your ministry. Right. Well, the ministry came from, it came from my, my sex addiction, my porn addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I, I got involved with, with the massage parlors. I got involved, highly involved in pornography. I had two affairs on my wife. Wow. And my last affair was really bad. I mean, it sent a ripple effect through our church mm. um, to the point where, you know, God exposed me in a very public way. Yeah. And but it, was, it was the best thing that really happened mm. was, was in this exposure. Mm -hmm. That's where the light could get in. Yeah. And, um, you know, <laughs> my wife, obviously, she didn't like me very much at the time. Right. But, you know, she put her armor of God on hmm. and she she took the sword of the spirit and, and she went to God. She didn't go to the any outside sources. She went to yeah. God and godly counsel yeah. to get through this. And she she prayed. She fasted. And, you know, she's a true warrior. Mm -hmm. And. Um, mm. That's where the ministry started. Yeah. I remember five months, just five months after all this happened, yeah. <clears throat> we went down to Galveston and uh, we were just talking about a ministry for pornography. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still highly addicted to pornography. <laughs> yeah. And you're talking about a ministry. <clears throat> um, but she came up with a name. And I'm like, well, you know, it needs to be something with an acronym because I really like acronyms. Right. And she's like, uh, Brothers overcoming lustful desires, just like that. I'm like, oh, that's good. Oh, that's, that's awesome. so good. Yeah. And so, five months, God gave us a vision, even though it was way out there. Yeah. It was still a vision, 
of what God could do through us. Mm -hmm. And and slowly, you know, God put stepping stones out in front of us um, to really have a ministry. You know, in the meantime, uh, I I got with uh, a counselor, Pastor Bill. Mm -hmm. Um, I still meet with him every week. That's awesome. And actually, he is part of Bold Ministry. He's the treasurer. And he is going to be part of the uh, Bold for Pastors um, exclusively just for pastors. Yeah. Um, He's going to be on Zoom meetings with them every week and accountability just for pastors. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I just appreciate you, you know, being able to be on the program Mm -hmm. and just sharing your heart. It sounds like too, that you really got a real sense of the real compassion and love of Christ through Mm. your wife in your situation too. It sounds like that relationship was very foundational in encouraging you to move forward. So if you were to speak one thing to men that are watching right now, maybe they're dealing with pornography, Mm -hmm. maybe there's something kind of a a secret, something they're dealing with, what would you share with them right now? You're forgiven. Plain and simple. And there's grace. Um, guys come into bold and it's a revolving door. They'll come in and they'll, they'll just have a sense of unforgiveness on themselves Mm -hmm. and they'll go right out the door. And, and bold is here to help you and, and to let you know that this is a safe place for guys struggling. Porn or sexual morality in the Bible, it's an umbrella. And underneath this umbrella, you have, you have, the homosexuals, you have the transgenders, you have the fornicators, you have the, the infidels, you, you have, yeah. you have uh, even sex offenders, you have all the sexual morality under this umbrella. Mm-hmm. In bold, we treat it as just that. Yeah. Let's help you. Yeah. You know, let's, let's get you where you need to be in Christ. Yeah. Let's get you, help you to freedom. Then let's get you in a discipleship program. Right. Then let's get you out the door so you can disciple other men. Right, because you have that healing, and that's a part of you now Most that you definitely. can bring that healing to other people. Most definitely. Brian, thank you for being on Man 360. Yeah. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate your heart. and We'll yeah. just pray for your ministry and believe that God's going to do great things, continue to do great things through you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the program today. I want to just take a few minutes and just talk with you about the issue of pornography and kind of give you some statistics. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Sam and Brian. I really love their ministries and what they're doing and really combating the depth and the breadth of pornography. So I want to read some of these statistics to you. You may not even realize some of these things. Um, This is from the Baptist News Global website, and I'll provide the link on the additional content page of the website as well. More than 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. The average visit lasts 6 minutes and 29 seconds. There are around 42 million porn websites, which totals around 370 million pages of porn on the Internet. The porn industry annual annual revenue is more than the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball combined. It's also more than the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. That is just mind-boggling. 40% of families in the United States report that pornography is a problem in their home. Pornography use increases the marital infidelity rate by more than 300%. Uh, 68% of church-going men and more than 50% of pastors view porn on a regular basis. The young Christian adults, 18 to 24 years old, 76% actively search for porn. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month, like actively currently watching porn. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation. And 69% say porn has adversely impacted the church. This is, this is the key. This is the reason why we do this program. This is the reason why we did this segment. Only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggling with pornography. And I thought that last stat was so staggering. You know, the reason why there's uh, ministries like Covenant Eyes, like Bold, and what they do is to provide a resource for you. And really this conversation right now even is about really for you to, con- to, to consider who you are, consider where you are in life, and are you comfortable with what you're getting for what you're putting into your life? You know, maybe there's some changes and things that you need to make, specifically, um, you know, sexually and some of these things with pornography. And I want to read a Bible verse to you, Colossians 3, 5. This is what it says. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual sin, impurity, lust, and shameful desires. Don't be greedy for the good things of this life, for that is idolatry. 
And if you think about it, idolatry is not just something external. You know, it's not like a car. You know, I like collecting watches, you know, so it's not like I'm just going to idolize and I'm going to put that watch before God. But really what this verse is talking about is don't make yourself an idol. And really what pornography does and that focus is of, of pornography is trying to feed something and to idolize you that you're more important, that you're trying to fill a need. Maybe that God can't fill in you or you feel like God can't fill that in you. Maybe there's other people around you that can't fill that. And you also notice the difference of the law and grace in here. God does not say, if you live a life of freedom from sin, then I'll give you a position of death with Christ. That would be the law. Our position then would depend on our own efforts, and needless to say, no one would ever attain that position. Instead, God says, I freely give to all who believe on the Lord Jesus a position of favor in my sight. Now go out and live a life that is consistent with such a high calling, which is grace. And our blessing and healthy, I, read the, I wrote this too, our blessing and healthy relationship with God doesn't come from, from the removal of sin in our lives. It comes from putting to death the things that do not honor God because Jesus has already given us that position of favor. You know, it's like we, we try to do things. We try to say, you know, I'm going to try to get more holy or I'm going to try to do these things. God's already made you holy. And now what we do is because of that love for us, because he has that for us, he wants us to walk in that. He wants us to exist in that. You know, accountability as a man too is not just to say, oh, I can't do this or I can't look at that because I'm going to be asked that. That's not true accountability. True accountability is saying, you know, how are you pressing into God? How are you getting closer to God? How are you pursuing Him? You know, instead of having sin management sessions, just saying, yeah, I did that again. But it's like, how are you really being pushed for God to really do something great in your life? So I want to pray for you right now. And I hope this program, again, can mean something to you and can be a, a watermark for you to do something different in your life. So God, right now, I thank you for every man that's watching this program. God, I thank you for every family that's been affected by pornography or other sexual addictions. God, I thank you that your anointing and your power is greater than anything that would want to come against any man that's watching this program right now. God, I thank you for freedom from pornography. God, I thank you that you've already provided the power and the strength for that freedom to occur. And God, I thank you for ministries like Covenant Eyes and Bold and other ones, God, that provide a way out, God, so that you can help us to walk through these things in life. We love you, God. We thank you, God. I thank you that men are consecrating their eyes to you. They're consecrating their actions to you. God, and I thank you they're lining up with their heart is lining up, God, with what you've already done in them and the victory that you already have for them right now. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's do our 360 degree review of today's program. Topics like pornography are tough but need to be addressed. The day and age that we live in is full of perversion and things that desire to take our focus off of not only a healthy relationship with Jesus but also with each other. It's great to know that there are ministries like Covenant Eyes and Bold that are there to help men. If you go right now to man360.tv and click on the additional content page, you'll see links to Covenant Eyes and Bold to help start on your journey of healing and build up your defenses to fight against the devil. Man360 was created to help men be complete in every way through Christ, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it and feel like you gained some important tools to help you in your walk with Jesus. If you have a prayer request, you can send us an email on our website, or you can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on Man360.